Alrighty, and today I wanted to talk about how we can work through Packet Tracer and setting up a uh, an answer file specifically with a connectivity test in the answer file. Now, if you've worked with Packet Tracer before, you know one of the great things about it is that it can self-grade. What that means is me as the instructor can come in here and say, well, this server right here should have a very specific IP address. And when I specify what this IP address is, uh, then you as the student go in, you change the IP address, and it automatically grades whether you've received or put in the correct IP address or not. I can do that for the for the uh, IP address. I can do that for various services that are running on it. Um, I can do that for its name. Lots of different aspects that I can do just on that server. I can do the same thing on my routers and switches and I can look at various configurations that are on those routers and switches. Now one thing I can look at, for instance, on this router if I wanted to put in an access list or an ACL. Now there's a lot of things that can work really well with there. I can go ahead and say I want an access list with this one specific name and this specific firewall rule and you have to type it in exactly the way I'm expecting it to be. However, as you start getting into more and more complicated access lists, that becomes more problematic than, is, than it uh, necessarily should be. For instance, what if the name doesn't quite match what I think it should be? What if somebody types in something uh, with a slightly different name than what I chose? What if their firewall rule order is slightly different? There's always more than one way to do things, so why should the order have to be from whatever I specify? Um, what if the rule rules are slightly different than what I specified, but they still work? Then maybe there should be a better way to be able to set up the access lists or be able to set up the tests so the access lists are more flexible. And that's what a connectivity test can do. Uh, so we can see here we have some basic instructions. Uh, we have our three networks. We have management, desktops, and our server network. Management network should be able to access the desktop uh, servers, and desktops should not be able to access the servers. So if we look at that, basically we should be able to go this way, but when I go this way, I should be denied and somewhat implied there should be no issues going between management and desktop. So I want to set up connectivity tests that allow me to do exactly that. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Now in order to start off with the connectivity test, the first thing I need to do is actually start some connectivity between these different networks. For that, I'm going to do a ping or the simple PDU right here. Uh, pretty simple process you just click on it you see my icon change to a little envelope you click on your source in this case PC 0 and then click on your destination server 0 Now I'm gonna do that for PC 1 to server 0 and I'm also gonna do it for PC 0 to PC 1 now we can then look at this and go into the simulation mode uh, let's go ahead and speed this up and click play and we can see these pings moving from stage to stage throughout our network. I haven't set up any firewall rules so obviously this is going to work. There we go. So all of our pings went through, they all succeeded, uh, everything worked perfectly. Uh, now we should be able to start modifying our answer file in order to confirm that this is working or in order to then test later if this is working for our students. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the little wizard icon up here in order to open up the activity wizard. Uh, do I want to use this as the answer network? Absolutely. In fact, more than just using it as the answer network, I also want to use it as the uh, as the initial network 
So I'm going to click on initial network before I forget and say copy from answer. It says, are you sure? Yes. Okay, so now I have an initial network and an answer network. Nothing has changed between the two because I'm not really concerned about them looking for IP addresses being set up. What I want to do is I want to go into the answer network section here. And this is where we would normally specify our IP addresses. Uh, for instance, PC0, I can browse through here and look at my ports, specifically Ethernet. And I can see, well, do I want the Ethernet IP address to be 192.168.42.10? If I wanted to test for that, I simply check that box. But that's not what I want to test for. What I want to test for is what's known as the connectivity tests. And here I have 0, 1, and 2. And if you recall, I sent out three pings, which is 0, 1, and 2. I can get more specific here on the connectivity test tab. Uh, and I can see, well, I have a source of PC0, a destination of server 0, which I believe sh in my ultimate test should fail. So I'm going to change the test condition here from do not to fail. PC1 to server 0 should continue to succeed, so I'm going to change that to success. And then, it, though it's not stated in the instruction, uh, 0 to 1 should succeed, so I'll say successful. So let's go back to the assessment tree. Uh, let's choose our connectivity tests. Maybe let's add some points to those. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and save that. And then let's go ahead and test the activity. So one thing that happens is that the completion percentage here is not always correct. What you have to do is you have to actually click on check results. Uh, oh, actually, I believe I have to wait for it. There we go. And then check results. And there we go. This activity is incomplete. Please try again. Assessment items. Oh, one of my connectivity tests failed. I can look for more specifics. PC0 can ping server 0. It should not be able to. All right. Well, let's go ahead and let's make it so. So let's go ahead and edit the configuration for the router. Uh, IP access list standard protect servers uh, permits. 192.168.242.0 uh, Implicit deny so I don't have to worry about anything else. Go to the interface. And at that point right there that should be everything I need. So now, in theory, if I click Check Results, it will test to see if the desktops can reach the servers, if the desktops can reach management, and if management can reach the servers. Check Results. Congratulations. I can see that I have all three of them correct, and more specifically, what type of traffic is happening between which servers, and whether it's succeeding or failing. So there we go. Even though I didn't necessarily uh, care what the access list name was or where it was placed or what the order of the rules or even what the rules were, I cared about the end result. So I was able to help define what the end result was and then test based off of that end result.